Hello everybody, this is Voodoo G, and in this video I am going to be showing you how to set up your M Audio code with FL Studio 20. First, we are going to start with the M Audio code editor. Using the editor, you can change the behavior of nearly any element on the M Audio code. You can also use it to change the color of your buttons or pads. So let's get started. When you click on any of the elements inside here, you can see you've got a bunch of parameters which you can alter. However, the only ones you care about at the moment are the channels for the pads and the key zones. For FL Studio, you want to set the pads to channel 4. You need to do this for every pad individually. The keys are divided into multiple zones. If zones are disabled, all of the keys are playing on the channel of zone 1. So let's set them up. Zone 1 is set to channel 5, zone 2 to channel 6, zone 3 to channel 7 and zone 4 to channel 8. At the top right, you can now type in your preset's name. Once you are done with your setup, navigate to File in the top left corner. Click Save Preset and save it in one of your folders. Then click on File again and press Send Preset. Now an export window will open. It will give you the option to export the preset to the keyboard's RAM or directly replace preset 1. Now click on Send and wait a couple of seconds. The editor should now inform you that the preset has been successfully sent to your device. In order for the change to take effect, you need to switch presets on the keyboard manually. You do this by using the up and down arrows right beneath the screen. Press up and then down. Your M Audio code should now have the correct preset loaded. Now let's move on to FL Studio. Open the software, go to Options, MIDI settings and look for your keyboard. You will now find four different controllers. The code MIDI in 2, MIDI in 3 and MIDI in 4. For FL Studio, the only ones important are code and MIDI in 3. Code is the playable keys, pads and assignable controls of this device. MIDI in 3 is the transport and navigation section of this device. Activate code and MIDI in 3. Set code to generic controller and MIDI in 3 to Mackie Control Universal. Leave MIDI in 2 and 4 off. Your keyboard should now work flawlessly with FL Studio. Test it out by using the transport controls. You can now also use the keyboard to switch between different channels. Now load in a couple of virtual instruments like FL Keys, Citrus and FPC. If you select one of them, you should now be able to play it with your keys or your pads. In order to switch between them using your controller, you need to hold the shift button and press the arrows either up or down. This will then move the selection inside FL Studio. Mapping the pads to FPC. Beneath the FPC logo, there's a little arrow pointing down. Click on it and select Map Notes for Entire Bank. Now press every pad on your M Audio code sequentially from bottom left to top right. To map the FPC to the pad section of the code, regardless of which plugin is selected, right click FPC on the channel rack, select Receive Notes from code 61 and pick channel 4. Using the same method, you can also assign different instruments to the individual zones of the keyboard. If you want to undo this, right click the plugin again, go to receive notes from and select unlock. Let's move on to the control section. Say you want to link one of the knobs on the keyboards to one of the parameters inside the software. Here's how you do this. There are two methods, link to controller and override generic link. In terms of setting them up, both work the same way. Right click the control you want to access from your keyboard and select link to controller or override generic link and move the controller on your keyboard you want to map the parameter to. When selecting link to controller, you're creating a unique link to this specific instance of the plugin. This means that the knob or fader you have just linked will always access that plugin and that parameter as long as it remains inside the project regardless of what plugin is currently selected. And generic link, on the other hand, is global, meaning whenever this type of plugin is selected, the control in question will access that specific parameter. This is especially useful if you are browsing presets on a plugin that has multiple macros, as you don't have to map them each time you're loading in a new instance of that plugin. All right, there you have it. This is how you set up the M Audio code with FL Studio. If you have any more questions, leave a comment or join my Discord server Wonders of Sound. If you have followed the setup correctly and still your keyboard doesn't work with FL Studio, please contact ImageLine support. They may be able to help you.
In the video description you'll find useful links related to this video as well as the download link for the M Audio Code Editor. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of the video. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to my channel. The link on the left will take you to my playlist Music Production on a Budget and the link on the right will take you to my latest live performance. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.